Captain. Long-range sensors are picking up an unidentified object approaching at high velocity, reported Lieutenant Parker, his tone laced with a mix of concern and curiosity. Commodore James Hawkins turned his gaze from the vast expanse of space visible from the bridge of the S. Valiant, directing his attention to the lieutenant. Can you identify it, Parker? Hawkins asked, his voice steady, betraying none of the apprehension that suddenly gripped him. Parker's fingers danced over the console, his brow furrowing as he processed the incoming data. It's... it's a Zoltan Dreadnought, sir, and it's heading straight for us. The Bridge of the Valiant, usually abuzz with the routine activities of a patrol mission along the Outer Rim, fell into a tense silence. The Zoltan Empire, known for its relentless ambition to expand and conquer, had become increasingly bold in their incursions, but encountering one of their dreadnoughts this far from the core territories was unexpected and alarming. Options, Mr. Parker? Hawkins's voice cut through the tension prompting his crew to spring into action. We could attempt to evade, sir. Our engines are at full capacity, but the dreadnought's speed is. It's unprecedented, Parker responded, his eyes locked on the screen, displaying the rapidly closing distance between the Valiant and the approaching Zultan ship. Hawkins considered this for a moment, his mind racing through scenarios. Evading would be the safe choice, but it would also mean leaving the Outer Rim territories exposed to Zoltan aggression. As a seasoned officer of Earth's fleet, Hawkins knew all too well the importance of these border regions. They were not just strategic assets, but homes to millions who looked to Earth's fleet for protection. Prepare for engagement, Hawkins finally declared, his decision firm. Inform the crew, battle stations. We will not let this dreadnought through. Parker nodded, swiftly relaying the orders. Within moments, the Valiant buzzed with activity as the crew prepared for the impending confrontation. Despite the grim odds, there was a sense of resolve that permeated the air. This was not the first time they faced the Zoltans, and if Hawkins had anything to say about it, it wouldn't be the last. The S. Valiant, while only a frigate, was among the most advanced in Earth's fleet. Its shield technology, a testament to human ingenuity, had been designed to withstand considerable punishment. As the Zoltan dreadnought loomed larger on the viewscreen, its formidable silhouette bristling with weaponry, Hawkins couldn't help but feel a surge of pride for his ship and crew. The shields at maximum. Ready all weapons, he ordered, his gaze fixed on the approaching menace. Sir, the Zoltan ship is hailing us, reported Ensign Leela the communications officer. On screen, Hawkins commanded, his expression steely. The viewscreen flickered to reveal the interior of the Zoltan Dreadnought's bridge. At the center stood a Zoltan commander, his features marked by the characteristic ruggedness of his race. His eyes, cold and calculating, bore into Hawkins. Earth vessel, you stand in the path of the Zoltan Empire. Stand down and surrender, or face obliteration. The Zoltan commander intoned, his voice devoid of emotion. Hawkins met the commander's gaze, his resolve unwavering. This is Commodore James Hawkins of the S. Valiant. We will not stand down. We will defend these territories and protect those under our care. You will find that we are not so easily obliterated. A brief flicker of surprise crossed the Zoltan commander's face, quickly replaced by a sneer. So be it, Commodore. Prepare for your end. The communication was abruptly cut, leaving the Valiant's bridge crew in a momentary silence before the reality of their situation set in. They were about to engage a Zoltan Dreadnought, a ship designed for the sole purpose of conquest and destruction. Hawkins stood tall, his voice carrying through the bridge. We knew this day might come. Each of us has trained for moments like these. Remember, we're not just fighting for ourselves, but for every soul in these territories counting on us. Hold fast, stand strong. We are the shield that guards the realms of humanity. The crew, galvanized by Hawkins's words, set to their tasks with renewed determination. As the Valiant braced for the impending collision of wills and weaponry, Hawkins whispered a silent prayer for his crew, 
and for the innocents whose fates now hung in the balance. Let's show them what we're made of, he said. The battle about to commence. Initiating evasive maneuvers, Lieutenant Parker shouted over the din of alarms and the low hum of the Valiant's engines working overtime. The bridge was a whirlwind of activity. Each crew member laser focused on their role in the impending confrontation. Commodore James Hawkins stood firm. His eyes locked on the viewscreen where the Zoltan dreadnought loomed large, its weapon ports glowing ominously. The disparity in size and firepower between the two ships was stark. The Valiant dwarfed by the massive Zoltan war machine. Shields up. Keep them between us and those plasma cannons, Hawkins ordered, his voice calm but carrying the weight of the situation. The crew of the Valiant, seasoned and battle-hardened, worked with practiced efficiency, their actions guided by trust in their Commodore and each other. As the first volley of plasma blasts streaked across space towards the Valiant, the advanced human shield technology was put to the test. The shields flared brightly upon impact, dissipating the energy in a dazzling display of light. The ship shuddered under the force, but held firm, shields holding at 75%. But we can't take many hits like that, Ensign Leela reported, her eyes never leaving her console. Hawkins nodded, his mind racing through strategies. Parker, target their weapon systems. If we can disable their firepower, it'll level the playing field. Parker's fingers flew over his console, locking onto the dreadnought's main plasma cannons. Torpedoes away, he announced, a moment before the Valiant shuddered as it launched its payload. The torpedoes arced through space, trailing plumes of fire as they homed in on the Zoltan ship. The dreadnought, seemingly slow to react to the smaller ship's offensive, took the hit directly on one of its main cannons resulting in a spectacular explosion that rippled along its hull. Direct hit on the enemy's starboard cannon. It appears to be offline, Parker exclaimed, a note of triumph in his voice. The crew allowed themselves a brief moment of elation before the reality of the battle snapped back into focus. The dreadnought, though damaged, was far from defeated, and it unleashed another barrage of fire, this time targeting the Valiant's engines. Damage to the aft section. Engines are at 60%, reported Chief Engineer Santos, her voice tense. We need to keep moving, or they'll pin us down. Hawkins knew she was right. The Valiant's agility was its greatest asset in this David vs. Goliath battle, and they couldn't afford to lose it. Evasive Pattern Delta. Keep us unpredictable, he commanded. The Valiant danced through space, weaving and dodging the relentless assault from the Dreadnought. Each maneuver was a calculated risk, but Hawkins trusted his crew implicitly, each member performing their duties with a level of precision and dedication that was the hallmark of Earth's fleet. As the battle waged on, the toll on the Valiant and its crew began to mount. The shields flickered under the onslaught, the ship's hull groaning under the strain. Yet amidst the chaos, the resolve of the crew never wavered. They were united in their purpose driven by a determination to stand against the Zoltan threat, to protect their homes and the lives of those they were sworn to defend. Hawkins watched his crew, pride swelling in his chest despite the dire circumstances. Parker, prepare for one more volley. Target their propulsion systems this time. If we can cripple their movement, we might just make it out of this. Understood, Commodore, Parker replied his concentration absolute as he lined up the shot. The Valiant, battered but unbroken, unleashed its final salvo, the torpedoes streaking towards the dreadnought with lethal intent. The Zoltan ship, its reactions slowed by the damage it had sustained, failed to evade in time. The torpedoes struck true, sending shockwaves through the dreadnought, its propulsion systems erupting in flames. We've got them! Their propulsion is down! Parker shouted, relief and disbelief mingling in his voice. Hawkins allowed himself a small smile, the tension of the battle momentarily easing. Well done, everyone. Let's get some distance and assess the damage. This fight might be over, but the war is far from won. As the Valiant limped away from the crippled Zoltan Dreadnought, its crew weary but spirits unbroken, 
Hawkins knew they had achieved something remarkable. They had faced down one of the most fearsome ships in the Zultan fleet and emerged victorious. It was a testament to the courage and resilience of the human spirit, a beacon of hope in the dark expanse of space. Commodore, should we pursue and finish them off? Parker asked, his voice a mix of caution and eagerness. Hawkins shook his head, his gaze fixed on the stars ahead. No, let's not push our luck. We've made our point. For now, let's focus on getting home and getting patched up. We live to fight another day. Commodore Hawkins, Earth is just ahead. Prepare for a hero's welcome, Ensign Leela announced, her voice tinged with a mix of pride and awe as the S Valiant approached its home planet. The ship, scarred from the recent engagement with the Zultan Dreadnought, was a testament to the crew's resilience and bravery. James Hawkins, standing at the helm, nodded in acknowledgement, his thoughts a whirlwind. The victory against the Zultan Dreadnought had been narrow and hard fought, a testament to human ingenuity and spirit. Yet, as Earth loomed larger in the viewscreen, he couldn't shake a growing sense of unease. As the Valiant entered Earth's atmosphere, the crew was met with an outpouring of celebration. News of their victory had spread, turning Hawkins and his crew into instant heroes. The skies above the spaceport were alive with fireworks, and the crowds below were a sea of cheering faces and waving banners. Look at all those people, sir. They're here for us, Lieutenant Parker remarked, his usual stoic demeanor giving way to a hint of wonder. Hawkins managed a smile, acknowledging the jubilant reception, but feeling the weight of responsibility even more acutely. They're celebrating our victory today, but we can't forget the cost at which it came, nor the challenges that lie ahead, he replied his gaze fixed on the scene unfolding below. The celebrations continued as the crew disembarked, with speeches, parades, and honors bestowed upon them. Hawkins, hailed as the hero of the hour, found himself at the center of it all, his every word and action magnified. Yet, amidst the accolades and adulation, a troubling report reached Hawkins's ears. Intelligence sources had intercepted communications indicating that Admiral Zork's far from being deterred by the recent defeat, was amassing a vast armada. The Zultan Empire, it seemed, was preparing for a full-scale assault on Earth and its colonies. The news cast a shadow over the festivities, and Hawkins knew he had to act. With the crew granted leave to spend time with their families and recover from the battle, Hawkins retreated to the solitude of his office to pore over the intelligence reports and strategize. Days turned into weeks as Hawkins worked tirelessly, consulting with military advisors, analyzing potential Zoltan tactics, and reinforcing Earth's defenses. The specter of the Zoltan Armada loomed large, a constant reminder that the war was far from over. It was during one of these strategy sessions that Captain Maria Alvarez, Hawkins's trusted confidant, approached him with an urgent look in her eyes. Commodore, We've just received word from the outer colonies. Zoltan scout ships have been spotted in sectors 7 and 9. It looks like they're probing our defenses, she reported, her voice steady but conveying the gravity of the situation. Hawkins leaned back in his chair, his mind racing. The Zoltan's tactics were clear test Earth's defenses, find the weaknesses, and exploit them. The victory against the Dreadnought had bought them some time but it was now clear that Zorks was far from finished. We need to reinforce those sectors immediately. Dispatch the 5th and 8th fleets and make sure they're prepared for a Zoltan engagement, Hawkins ordered, his voice firm and authoritative. Alvarez nodded, turning to leave before pausing at the door. Sir, the crew is ready to stand with you whatever comes. We've faced down the Zoltans before and we'll do it again. Hawkins met her gaze, a sense of resolve stealing within him. Thank you, Captain. We'll need every bit of that courage and determination in the days ahead. We've won battles, but the war. The war is just beginning. Commodore Hawkins, the Council has requested your presence immediately. Ensign Leela informed, her tone more formal than usual, hinting at the gravity of the summons. Hawkins, 
still mulling over the recent intelligence reports and the looming Zoltan threat, nodded his acknowledgement, his thoughts momentarily redirected. As Hawkins made his way to the council chambers, the corridors of the Earth Fleet Command Center seemed unusually still, as if in anticipation of the significant developments about to unfold. Upon entering the chamber, Hawkins was met with the solemn faces of the Earth Defense Council, a clear indication that the matters at hand were of the utmost severity. Commodore Hawkins, please take a seat. Admiral Singh, the head of the council, gestured to a chair at the center of the room. The formality of the moment was palpable, and Hawkins braced himself for what was to come. James, you have served Earth and its colonies with unparalleled valor and dedication, Admiral Singh began, his voice resonating with a mix of gravitas and respect. Your recent victory against the Zoltan Dreadnought has not only saved countless lives, but has also inspired hope in these trying times. Hawkins remained silent, sensing that this was more than just a commendation, that the Council had more pressing matters to discuss. It is for these reasons, and in recognition of your exceptional leadership and strategic acumen, that the Council has unanimously decided to promote you, Admiral Singh continued, pausing for effect. Effective immediately, you are being promoted to the rank of Rear Admiral. The weight of the announcement hung in the air. Hawkins, taken aback by the unexpected honor, struggled to find the words. Admiral, I. I'm deeply honored, but I must confess, I wasn't expecting this. Admiral Singh smiled, a rare expression that conveyed both the seriousness of the moment and a hint of camaraderie. We understand your surprise, James, but these are extraordinary times, and they call for extraordinary measures. As Hawkins processed the gravity of his new role, Admiral Singh's demeanor shifted, signaling that the promotion was but a prelude to a more daunting task. However, with this promotion comes a formidable challenge, Admiral Singh said, his tone sobering. Intelligence indicates that Admiral Zorks, undeterred by his recent defeat, is amassing a formidable armada. His intent is clear a full-scale assault on Earth and its colonies. The room fell silent, the magnitude of the threat casting a shadow over the council members. Hawkins felt the weight of responsibility settle upon his newly appointed shoulders. We need someone with your tactical brilliance and proven leadership to counter this threat, Admiral Singh continued. We are tasking you with the formation and command of a specialized task force. Your mission, to intercept and neutralize Zorx's armada before it can reach our territories. Hawkins, though honored by the Council's faith in him, understood the enormity of the challenge ahead. The task was Herculean, the stakes higher than ever before. He would be leading Earth's finest into the maw of an impending storm, with the fate of humanity hanging in the balance. Admiral, I understand the gravity of the situation and the trust you're placing in me, Hawkins responded, his voice steady, reflecting his unwavering commitment. I accept this task. We will meet Zorx's armada head-on, and we will prevail. Admiral Singh nodded. A sense of resolve mirrored in the faces of the council members. We have every confidence in you, James. You have the full support of the Earth Defense Council. Godspeed. As Hawkins exited the council chambers, the corridors no longer seemed as still as before. Instead, they thrummed with the latent energy of the monumental task ahead. Hawkins knew that the days to come would be fraught with peril, but he also knew that retreat was not an option. Rear Admiral Hawkins, sir, where do we begin? Ensign Leela asked, sensing the shift in Hawkins's demeanor, the weight of command now fully upon him. Hawkins turned to her, his gaze firm, his resolve unshakable. We start by assembling the best, Gather the fleet commanders. It's time we chart our course to confront Zorx's armada. We have a world to protect. We need more than just Earth's fleet if we're going to stand a chance against Zorx's armada, Rear Admiral Hawkins stated, addressing the assembled fleet commanders in the strategic planning room. His promotion was still fresh, yet the enormity of the task at hand left no room for hesitation. The commanders, a mix of seasoned veterans and rising stars, 
exchanged glances, understanding the gravity of Hawkins's statement. The Zoltan threat was unlike any they had faced before, requiring not just military might but a united front that spanned across the galaxy. Sir, are you suggesting we reach out to the other star systems for support? Captain Alvarez inquired, her tone indicating she understood the complexity and potential resistance they might face. Hawkins nodded firmly. Exactly, Captain. We've had our differences in the past, but the threat of the Zoltan Empire transcends all. It's time we put aside our grievances and work together for our mutual survival. The task was daunting. The galaxy was a tapestry of diverse civilizations, each with its own politics, cultures, and long-standing rivalries. Hawkins knew that forging alliances would require more than just diplomacy. It would require a demonstration of Earth's commitment to the collective security of the galaxy. Over the following weeks, Hawkins embarked on a series of diplomatic missions, meeting with leaders from various star systems. Each meeting was a delicate dance of negotiation, with Hawkins advocating for a united defense packed against the Zoltan threat. His first significant breakthrough came with the Arcturian Council, a powerful assembly governing a federation of planets known for their advanced technology and formidable military prowess. The Arcturians, having faced Zoltan incursions in the past, understood the existential threat posed by Zorx's armada. Rear Admiral Hawkins, your proposal is ambitious. Why should we believe that this alliance will be any different from past failed attempts at unity? The Arcturian Prime inquired, her voice echoing in the vast council chamber. Hawkins met her gaze, his resolve clear in his eyes. Because this time, we're not asking you to stand behind us. We're asking you to stand with us. Earth is committed to this alliance, not just for our sake, but for the sake of all civilizations threatened by the Zoltan Empire. The Arcturian Prime considered his words, her expression inscrutable. After a moment, she nodded. Very well, Rear Admiral. The Arcturian Federation will join your alliance. But be warned, the Zoltans are a formidable foe. We must be prepared for the challenges ahead. Emboldened by this success, Hawkins continued his diplomatic efforts, securing alliances with the Torian Confederacy, known for their strategic brilliance, and the Zephyr Collective, a coalition of merchant planets with vast resources and trade networks. Each new ally brought unique strengths to the table, from advanced technology and military might to intelligence and economic support. The growing alliance was a beacon of hope, a testament to what could be achieved when the galaxy stood together against a common enemy. However, not all were convinced. Skepticism and old rivalries threatened to unravel the fragile unity Hawkins was working so hard to build. It was during a particularly tense meeting with the skeptical leaders of the Viridian Consortium that Hawkins's diplomatic skills were put to the test. Rear Admiral, your alliance is a noble endeavor, but how can we trust that Earth won't use this as an opportunity to assert dominance over the rest of us? One of the Viridian leaders challenged, his tone laced with suspicion. Hawkins leaned forward, his voice steady and sincere. This isn't about dominance, it's about survival. The Zoltan Empire doesn't discriminate in its conquests. If we don't stand together, we will all fall separately. I give you my word, as a representative of Earth and this alliance, that our only goal is to ensure the safety and sovereignty of all our civilizations. The room fell silent as the Viridian leaders considered his words. After a long moment, the lead Viridian nodded slowly. Very well, Rear Admiral Hawkins. The Viridian Consortium will join your alliance. But remember, we will be watching closely. As Hawkins left the meeting, a sense of cautious optimism filled him. The alliance was growing, a coalition of the willing, bound by a shared purpose. Yet, he knew that the hardest battles were yet to come. Admiral, do you think they'll all hold true to their word? Captain Alvarez asked as they boarded their ship, ready to continue their diplomatic mission. Hawkins looked out at the stars, a myriad of possibilities unfolding before him. They will, Captain. They have to. The future of the galaxy depends on it. 
We've got a narrow window to infiltrate Zorx's command center. It's now or never, Rear Admiral Hawkins stated, his tone firm, as he briefed his elite team on the impending covert operation. The room, filled with the galaxy's finest, was tense, the air charged with anticipation and the gravity of the mission at hand. Lieutenant Chen, the team's infiltration expert, leaned over the holographic map, displaying the intricate layout of Zorx's heavily fortified command center. The security is tight, but there's a service conduit here, barely monitored. It's our best shot at getting inside undetected. Hawkins nodded, his gaze fixed on the map, analyzing every potential choke point and security measure. Once inside, we split into two teams. Alpha team will head to the communications hub to intercept Zorx's orders and gather intel. Bravo team, you're with me. We're going for the main control room. Sergeant Ramirez, a veteran of countless covert ops, spoke up, her voice steady. What about extraction, sir? We need a solid plan to get out once we've got what we came for. Hawkins turned to face her, a glint of determination in his eyes. Extraction will be by two stealth shuttles parked in the eastern and western hangars. We'll cause a diversion on the northern end to draw their forces away. Timing will be critical. The team members exchanged quick glances, their expressions a mix of resolve and understanding. They were no strangers to danger, but the stakes had never been higher. Let's talk gear, Chen interjected, changing the focus to the technical aspects of the mission. We'll need EMP grenades to disable electronic locks and surveillance. Also, cloaking devices for each member. We stay ghosts until we reach our objectives. Hawkins approved, his mind already running through the various scenarios they might encounter. Remember, this operation is about stealth and precision. We cannot afford a full-scale confrontation. Zorx's forces are too vast. We hit fast, we hit silently, and then we vanish. The team spent the next hours drilling the plan, memorizing the layout of the command center, and rehearsing their roles. The atmosphere was one of focused intensity, each member acutely aware of the part they played in the success of the mission. As night fell over the command center, the team made their final preparations. Cloaked in the shadows, they moved with silent precision towards the service conduit identified by Chen. The galaxy's fate rested on the success of their mission, and every step was taken with the utmost caution. Inside the conduit, the team navigated the cramped, Dimly lit passages, their movements synchronized, their senses heightened. Hawkins led from the front, his mind racing with contingencies and tactics. As they neared the split point, Hawkins stopped, turning to address his team one last time. This is it. Remember, stay sharp, stay silent, and stick to the plan. We'll rendezvous at the extraction points in exactly one hour. Good luck. The team split each subunit disappearing into the shadows, their forms blending into the darkness as they set out to complete their objectives. Hours later, as Hawkins and Bravo teams secured the main control room, the mission's success hung by a thread. They had the intel, but the base was on high alert, their presence no longer a secret. Admiral, we've got incoming. Lots of them, Sergeant Ramirez reported, her voice tense as she monitored the security feeds. Hawkins assessed the situation, his mind racing. They were outnumbered, but not outmaneuvered. Not yet. Hold your positions. We'll hold them off long enough for Alpha Team to make it to the extraction point. The team braced for the onslaught, their resolve unwavering. As the first wave of Zorx's forces breached the control room, Hawkins and his team fought with a fierce determination, each aware of the high stakes. In the midst of the chaos, Hawkins found himself back to back with Ramirez, their combined firepower holding the line. We're not going down without a fight, Ramirez, he shouted over the din of battle. Ramirez grinned, her eyes alight with a thrill of combat. Wouldn't have it any other way, Admiral. Let's give him hell. We're deep in the heart of enemy territory now. Stay alert, Rear Admiral Hawkins whispered, 
his eyes scanning the dimly lit corridor of Zorx's command center. The successful infiltration had brought them this far, but Hawkins knew the hardest part of the mission lay ahead. Lieutenant Chen, moving with practice stealth, nodded in agreement. Sensors indicate a high-security vault two levels down. It's likely where Zorx keeps his most sensitive intel. The small team, comprised of Earth's finest, moved silently, each step calculated to avoid detection. The command center, a labyrinth of corridors and security checkpoints, was the nerve center of Zorx's operations, and the risk of capture was high. As they descended into the lower levels, the signs of the Zultan Empire's militaristic might were everywhere. Hawkins observed the alien symbols adorning the walls, a stark reminder of the enemy they faced. Sergeant Ramirez, her hand resting on the hilt of her plasma blade, whispered, We've got two guards ahead, stationed outside the vault. Hawkins peered around the corner, assessing the situation. The guards, clad in the heavy armor of the Zultan elite, were a formidable obstacle, but they had to be neutralized for the mission to proceed. Chen, you and I will take the one on the left. Ramirez, the one on the right is yours, Hawkins instructed, his voice barely audible. With a nod of understanding, the team prepared to strike. In a synchronized movement, they incapacitated the guards, their actions swift and silent to maintain the element of surprise. Inside the vault, Hawkins and his team were met with a treasure trove of Zoltan intelligence. Chen immediately set to work, hacking into the data terminals, her fingers flying over the holographic interface. We don't have much time. Grab everything you can, Hawkins urged, his gaze fixed on the door, expecting Zorx's forces to burst in at any moment. Minutes passed like hours as the team downloaded critical data, their focus absolute. Finally, Chen signaled success, a small device in her hand blinking rapidly, indicating a successful data transfer. Got it. We have what we came for, she announced, a hint of triumph in her voice. Hawkins nodded, a wave of relief washing over him. Time to exfiltrate. Let's move out before we overstay our welcome. The team retraced their steps, moving towards the extraction point with a stolen intel. The mission, fraught with danger at every turn, was nearing its critical final phase. As they neared the exit, an alarm blared, its shrill sound echoing through the corridors. They know we're here. Expect heavy resistance, Hawkins warned, his weapon at the ready. The team fought their way through, their path to freedom contested at every turn by Zorx's forces. Despite the odds, they pressed on, driven by the knowledge that the fate of the galaxy rested on their shoulders. As they finally emerged into the night, the stealth shuttles waiting to whisk them away, Hawkins turned to his team, a fierce pride in his eyes. You all performed admirably. This intel will give us the edge we need. As the shuttles ascended into the dark sky, leaving Zorx's command center behind, Chen leaned back, exhaustion and adrenaline warring within her. That was too close for comfort, Admiral, she breathed, relief evident in her voice. Hawkins, his gaze fixed on the stars above, replied, It always is, Lieutenant. But we did it. We made it out alive. We're running out of options. Zorx's fleet is closing in, and our defenses won't hold much longer, Rear Admiral Hawkins stated grimly, examining the tactical display that showed the relentless advance of Zoltan forces. The situation was dire, with Earth's newly forged alliances under threat of being overwhelmed by Zorx's superior firepower. Lieutenant Chen, her expression somber, offered a glimmer of hope. There might be a way, sir. We've identified a critical power relay station supplying energy to Zorx's flagship. If we can take it out, it might just give us the opening we need. Hawkins considered the plan, well aware of the risks involved. Sabotaging the power relay would require a team to infiltrate deep into enemy territory, a mission fraught with danger. It's a long shot, but we don't have the luxury of playing it safe anymore. Assemble a team, Chen. It's now or never. The team, comprised of Hand, 
picked volunteers aware of the mission's near suicidal nature, was ready within the hour. Among them was Sergeant Ramirez, her resolve unshaken despite the daunting task ahead. We understand the risks, Admiral. We're ready to do what's necessary for Earth and our allies. The operation commenced under the cover of darkness, with the team deploying in stealth shuttles towards the Zoltan Power Relay Station. As they approached, the enormity of the task became apparent, the station heavily fortified and crawling with Zoltan forces. Infiltrating the station required every ounce of skill and stealth the team possessed. They moved like shadows, avoiding patrols and disabling security systems, inching closer to their objective. The tension was palpable, each team member acutely aware that the slightest mistake could lead to catastrophic failure. As they reached the power core, Chen set to work on the sabotage, her hands steady despite the pressure. The rest of the team formed a defensive perimeter, prepared to hold off any Zoltan forces that might discover their presence. The sabotage was nearly complete when disaster struck. A Zoltan patrol stumbled upon the team, setting off an alarm that echoed throughout the station. In moments, they were under heavy fire, their position compromised. We need more time. Chen shouted over the din of battle, her fingers flying over the control panel as she worked to complete the sabotage. Hawkins, back on Earth, monitored the situation with a sinking heart, understanding the grim reality of the choices before him. The mission's success was critical, but it was clear not everyone would make it back. Ramirez, ever the soldier, made the ultimate decision. Go, I'll cover the retreat. Make sure this counts. Chen protested. Ramirez, we can't leave you here. But Ramirez was adamant, her voice cutting through the chaos. That's an order, Lieutenant. This is my fight. Now go. With a heavy heart, Chen and the remaining team members completed the sabotage and withdrew, the power relay station erupting into chaos behind them. Ramirez stood her ground, her bravery holding back the Zoltan forces long enough for her team to escape. As the stealth shuttles raced back towards Earth, the impact of the sabotage became clear. Zorx's flagship, starved of power, was vulnerable, giving Earth's fleet the opening they needed to launch a counterattack. The team's return was bittersweet, their mission successful, but at a great cost. Hawkins met them upon their return, his expression a mix of pride and sorrow. You've done well. Ramirez's sacrifice won't be forgotten. She saved us all. Chen, her eyes filled with tears, could only nod, the weight of their loss heavy on her heart. She was a true hero, sir. We'll make sure her name is remembered. Hawkins placed a hand on her shoulder, a silent promise to honor Ramirez's bravery. We'll see to it that her sacrifice marks the turning point in this war. For Ramirez, for Earth, and for all our allies. The intel we gathered is critical, but Zorx is moving faster than we anticipated. We need to act now, Rear Admiral Hawkins stated urgently, his focus on the gathered data that outlined Zorx's next move. The war had reached a pivotal moment, and time was a luxury they no longer had. Lieutenant Chen, reviewing the latest reconnaissance reports, added, Our window is closing. Zorx's forces are regrouping faster than expected. If we don't strike soon, we'll lose our advantage. The situation was dire. Zorx, aware of the recent sabotage, was accelerating his plans, leaving Hawkins and his team in a desperate race against time. They needed to disrupt Zorx's momentum before he could launch a counteroffensive that could potentially turn the tide of the war. Prepare all units for immediate deployment. We strike at dawn. It's now or never, Hawkins decided his voice brooking no argument. The fleet, battered but unbroken, was rallied for what could be the decisive battle of the war. As the Earth forces mobilized, Hawkins reviewed the battle plans with his command team. Every detail had to be perfect. There was no room for error. The impending confrontation with Zorx's armada was more than just a battle. It was a statement, a declaration that Earth would not go quietly into the night. The night before the assault, Hawkins couldn't sleep. 
the weight of command, the lives of his men and women, the future of Earth and its allies, all rested on his shoulders. He walked the decks of his flagship, the silence of the ship, a stark contrast to the storm brewing in the void. Dawn broke with a tense calm. The fleet, a mix of Earth and Allied ships, stood ready, their weapons primed and shields at maximum. Hawkins, standing on the bridge of his flagship, took one last look at the gathered armada, a silent prayer in his heart for the souls under his command. Admiral, all units report ready. We're awaiting your orders, Chen reported, her voice steady despite the palpable tension on the bridge. Hawkins took a deep breath, his gaze fixed on the star-studded void before him. This was it, the moment of truth. Signal all units. Commence the assault. For Earth, for freedom, for the future. As the fleet surged forward, the void erupted into a kaleidoscope of light and sound, the silence of space shattered by the thunder of war. The Earth forces, under Hawkins's command, cut through Zorx's defenses, their resolve unyielding, their spirits unbroken. The battle raged on, the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance. Hawkins, at the heart of the maelstrom, commanded with a calm born of years of conflict, his strategic acumen pushing back against Zorx's relentless assault. As the tide of the battle turned, with Earth's forces gaining the upper hand, Hawkins received a communication from the front lines. Admiral, we've breached their defenses. Zorx's flagship is in sight. Hawkins, his heart racing with the prospect of ending the war, responded with a command that would echo through the annals of history. All units, focus fire on Zorx's flagship. Bring him down. The final confrontation, a clash of wills and weapons, saw Zorx's flagship engulfed in flames, a testament to the courage and determination of Hawkins and his forces. As the enemy armada scattered, defeated, a cheer erupted across the fleet, a sound of victory and relief. In the aftermath, as the fleet regrouped, Hawkins addressed his crew, his voice filled with pride and gratitude. We did it. Against all odds, we prevailed. This victory belongs to each and every one of you. Chen, standing beside him, added, We've secured our future, Admiral. It's a new dawn for us all. Hawkins looked out at the stars, the battlefield now calm, the threat of Zorks extinguished. It's more than a new dawn, Chen. It's a promise of a better tomorrow. Let's go home. We've won, haven't we? Lieutenant Chen asked, her voice a mixture of disbelief and relief as she stood beside Rear Admiral Hawkins on the observation deck, watching the stars that had once been a battlefield now return to their peaceful twinkle. We have, Hawkins confirmed, the weight of his command easing with the knowledge of their hard-won victory. The war against Zorks and the Zultan forces was over, Earth and its allies had prevailed, but the cost had been high and the scars of battle ran deep. In the aftermath of the conflict, Earth's fleet returned home to a hero's welcome. The people of Earth, who had lived under the shadow of fear and uncertainty, now celebrated the return of their defenders with parades and jubilation. Hawkins, hailed as the savior of Earth, found himself at the center of the festivities, his name on the lips of grateful citizens. Yet, amidst the celebrations, Hawkins struggled with the burden of those who had been lost. Each cheer from the crowd was a reminder of the sacrifices made by his crew, the men and women who had stood by his side, some of whom did not return. In the quiet moments away from the public eye, Hawkins reflected on the war's toll, not just on him, but on all those who had fought. He pondered the fine line between duty and the cost it exacted on those called to serve. One evening, as the celebrations continued, Hawkins sought solitude in his old quarters, now filled with medals and commendations. The quiet was a stark contrast to the revelry outside, providing him with a moment to gather his thoughts. Chen found him there, her presence a silent support. It's hard to celebrate knowing what it took to get here, she said, understanding the turmoil that churned within him. Hawkins nodded, his gaze lingering on a photo of his crew, smiles frozen in time. Victory comes at a price. I find myself asking if it was worth it, 
the lives lost, the devastation wrought. Chen moved closer, her voice soft. They believed in the cause in you. Their sacrifices ensured the safety of countless others. It's a heavy burden, but we carry it together. Hawkins looked at Chen, her strength and loyalty a beacon during the darkest times. I couldn't have done it without you and the others. This victory, it belongs to all of us, to those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Together, they stood in silence, the weight of their reflections a shared bond. The triumph was not just in the winning, but in the resilience, the ability to stand up against the odds, to fight for a future where such sacrifices would no longer be necessary. As they prepared to join the ongoing celebrations, Hawkins took one last look at the photo, a silent promise to those who had fallen. We'll honor their memory, not just in words, but in how we live, in the peace we've fought so hard to achieve. Chen nodded, her resolve mirroring his. They won't be forgotten. We'll build a future worthy of their sacrifice. With that, Hawkins and Chen stepped out to rejoin the celebrations, their hearts heavy with the cost of their triumph, but buoyed by the hope of a brighter tomorrow. Let's go Chen. We have a world to rebuild.